it's extremely imperative that we understand that in any task or any project that any team or individual decides to take on or embark upon, they can either be a very structured way of doing it, which is an SOP, it's a time tried tested task, or of course, there's something innovative, something different, something creative. And when you look at both sides of the paradigm, um, the, the, the creative juices that really flow out are when essentially you're not being monitored, right? So if you talk to a lot of youngsters today, a lot of millennials today, they essentially like their space. They like to be told at a very broad level what is required to be done, what is required to be achieved. Having said these two things, if, you, if managers today or leaders are going to sit down and micromanage and say, do it this way, the what and the how is what really plays a very important role. So I think so, you know, culture building is not an overnight exercise. It is ingrained in behaviors, in manifestations of how those behaviors are rewarded. It is extremely important that to build a culture which allows you to fail not with the intent of picking on mistakes, but with the intent of learning of what not to do. So today Sahil may know what to do, but if he also knows what not to do, that itself is a great learning. And I think so that essentially, if I have to just summarize all of all of this, it will still not work if it doesn't lead from the top. So the, the management team, the leadership team at the top needs to exhibit behaviors like this, which essentially say that in my career with so-and-so organization, I have failed. I have learned from those failings and it is absolutely okay for each one of you to fail as long as we have a delta of failure. You know, we can't just say keep failing, you know, we organizations are here to make profit. We need to be conscious of that. So pretty much just managing that and taking it from there.